welcome back to Zola's Feast. Yay, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. Thank you so much for coming to join me. To all my regular subscribers, welcome home, darlings. Thank you for coming back. To all of those passing by, all those newbies, make sure you stay and enjoy the deliciousness. Hit that subscribe button and join the family. Right, so we are two weeks away from Christmas. Yay! I hope everyone's getting into the festive spirit. To help those who have not yet gotten into this festive spirit, I am going to be doing a giveaway and I will tell you all the details at the end of the video. Yes, so stick around for all the deliciousness. It's time for everybody to decide what their roast is. Last time we made a gammon roast. Today we are making a roast that lots of you have been asking me about and it is the traditional turkey roast. Today we are making a spice butter roasted turkey. Yum! Golden delicious spiced Oh, yeah. Okay, if you've never tried turkey before, this is your year. It's time. Okay, it's time. I'm going to try and give you as many tips as possible to get your turkey to be perfect this year. Right, let's get into what you need to make this recipe. You'll need a turkey, a whole turkey, mine's 4 kgs, plus the giblets. Then some salt, some of my Zola's Feast Flavor Bomb Spice Mix. You'll need an onion, a carrot, and some garlic, as well as some softened butter. So before we get cooking up the turkey, here are some rules for turkey preparation. Okay, so if you're buying a turkey that's frozen, which most of us are, my turkey was definitely frozen, preparation starts at least two days before, okay? Because remember, it's a big bird, so it takes a long time to defrost. And you want to make sure you defrost it in the fridge so that it's safe. So when you purchase a turkey, pop it into the fridge two days before you're going to want to roast it, okay? Your turkey has now been defrosting for two days. It is time for you to prep it. First things first, what you want to do is pat the bird dry. This is just going to make sure that all the seasoning you put on the bird will actually stick to the bird. Mix up the softened butter. You just want to mix it so it's all smooth. Then add a couple of tablespoons of my Zola's Feast Flavor Bomb Spice Mix, which you can purchase on my website, www.zolanair.com. Add some salt to taste and then mix it all together until it's combined. Right, it's time now to get the turkey flavored. So first thing you want to do is loosen the skin from the breast of the turkey. This is where the butter is going to go. So just use your fingers to run against the breast and loosen the skin. Luckily, turkey skin is quite tough, so the risk of breaking it is very minimal. But don't worry if you do tear it a little bit. So use your finger to separate the breast meat from the skin. What I also do is use a spatula, a rubber spatula, to help me reach the spaces where my short hand can't reach. So yeah, you know, use the spatula to slide under the skin and loosen the mixture to make space for that delicious butter. You'll notice that I have left that little springy thing on there. Um, the only reason why I left it on there is because it created a hole so I don't want the hole to be exposed and the butter to leach out. We'll just take it out after the turkey is cooked. Time now to add the butter to the turkey. So slide at least three quarters of the butter under the skin that you loosened. Then use your hand to slide it all over the breast. This will make sure that the breast stays juicy and will flavor the turkey from the top to the bottom. Rub the remainder of the butter all over the surface of the turkey. This will ensure that your skin gets delicious and crispy. Place the veggies and the giblets into a roasting tray. This will act as a trivet and keep the turkey raised so that the air circulates around the turkey for even cooking. This will also help flavor the gravy. Place the turkey on the veg and cover with foil. And this monster of a bird is now ready for the oven. My turkey is 4 kgs, so the rule is 20 minutes per 500 grams at 180 degrees okay so no matter how big your bird is how small your bird is if you remember those rules you'll get it perfect 20 minutes per 500 grams at 180 degrees to the oven halfway through the cooking time remove the foil and give the turkey a good basting with all those buttery delicious spice juices then return it to the oven without any foil for the remainder of the cooking if you find your bird is browning too quickly in the oven, feel free to return the foil onto the bird for the remainder of the cooking. Another really important thing to remember when making your turkey is that you have to let it rest. Once it comes out the oven, it has to rest so that the juices all go back to where they're supposed to, to make sure that you have a juicy, delicious turkey. So don't rush that step. Make sure you rest your turkey. Once the turkey is beautifully golden and has had all its cooking time, it's time to remove it from the roasting tray. Make sure you let the juices from the cavity run out. Pop it onto a plate and cover with foil and leave it to rest. Right, so while the turkey rests, let's make a quick pan gravy. So 
all of those delicious juices do not go to waste because now we're going to make a delicious gravy to pour over your turkey and enjoy with all the rest of your festive meal. Let's make a quick gravy. Strain the turkey juices and the veggies through a sieve into a saucepan. Make a cornflour slurry with just a tablespoon of cornflour and some water. Bring the turkey juices to the boil, add the slurry, then whisk and simmer until thickened. After simmering for about 20 minutes, your gravy is ready, seasoned with salt and pepper to taste, and it's ready for the turkey. You'll know your gravy is ready if it coats the back of a spoon. Time now to carve the turkey. So first I remove the legs. So use a fork if you're more comfortable. I find my hands works better, so cut the legs off. Then into two pieces, into the drumstick and the thigh. Repeat with the other leg, of course. Then it's time to take the wings off. So cut the wings off the breast. Yum. Cut down the breastbone and remove the entire breast. I do it this way. Some people like to slice it off the bird. Then once you've removed the whole breast, slice the breast into delicious slices. Repeat with the other side of the breast. Right, you already know, it's time for my favorite part, the tasting. So I'm going to take a piece of breast because, you know, if the breast is juicy, the rest is juicy. Oh, yum. Mm. So moist, so flavorful. Oh, all that spice mix. Yum, yum, yum. Yes, and with gravy poured over, even better. There you have it you are ready to feast on turkey for your festive meal. I hope you've enjoyed watching how I roast my turkey. I hope you'll use it. Make sure that you subscribe, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and comment and let me know if you'll be trying this this year. Thank you guys for joining me for yet another Zola's Feast. It has been my pleasure feasting with you. Oh, before I go, I almost forgot, I haven't told you how to enter the competition. Right, so I will be giving away two Zola's Feast festive boxes, which contain one of my signature aprons, um, my Zola's Feast spice mix, my Zola's Feast curry powder, as well as my Zola Nene mask. Yes, because you know, you gotta stay safe out there. In order to win, here's what you need to do. First of all, you need to be subscribed to this very channel, Zola's Feast. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and comment below what has been your favorite Zola's Feast recipe so far. So of all the videos that I've done since I started YouTube earlier this year, which recipe or video has been your favorite? Let me know and you could be a winner. Yay! I will announce the winner on my community tab. The competition is open for a week, so the announcement will happen next week, Friday. Good luck. Until next time, see you then.